Hi, this is David with Sun Grown Soaps in Arizona. Uh, we make uh, plant-based, chemical-free soaps, and we do that entirely with the power of the sun to uh, make the soaps. All the energy that we need comes from that. Even on a super overcast day like today, we have no problem because uh, we don't need any air conditioning or anything like that. Um, this is a technical video on what we put together here, maybe kind of help you out and give you ideas. Um, what we've got here is, um, these are sharp panels. They're manufactured in Memphis, Tennessee. They're 24 volt panels, uh, 240 watt. Um, I have 12 of them for a total of 2,800 watts. Um, I have the 12 panels broken down into uh, three array banks each. Each one of those array banks um, are 72 volts. Uh, what that allowed us to do was to um, run a much smaller wire and there was a big savings on the wire cost there. Uh, each one of the uh, 72 volt um, lines, and there's four of them going back to the controller, uh, is a number 10 uh, stranded wire. It's about 80 feet going back to the controller, so if we had to run a really big set of wires, it would have been really expensive. I saved about $300 by uh, being able to put this at a 72-volt system. And at 72-volt, like I said, times 4 on the stranded wires. This is uh, designed to be on a um, tracking system, track from uh, east to west throughout the day. We don't have that part working yet. I'm working on that right now. Um, you can see the uh, pivoting hardware there and the frame systems that it's on. These panels weigh about 300 pounds on each one of the uh, setups and uh, they move really easily, no problem there. Um, an actuator is not going to have any problem moving those at all. I decided to go with um, a pneumatic system on that. Um, I've been doing controls for a lot of years and I'm familiar with the pneumatics and they tend to be a lot more um, reliable, they create a lot of torque, and they're uh, a lot less expensive. And I'm going to head over now to the um, controller battery room. Okay, here we are in the uh, battery controller room. i go over some of the equipment that's in here. Uh, if you look over in the lower right-hand corner over there, uh, a couple of lines over there, those are the uh, pneumatic lines that are heading out to the uh, uh, array set. And uh, inside those uh, sleeve plastic is the four sets of number 10 stranded wire with the 72 volt uh, circuits on each one of them. And then I have uh, battery cutoff switches I'm using to isolate each one of the four uh, circuits. Um, this uh, uh, switch switches go over to this uh, terminal block right over here and allows it to go into one big cable feeding into the uh, controller here. This is a TriStar MPPT60. Uh, it's a multi-point power tracking controller. Uh, they work much better than the pulse width modulation controllers as what these do is like on a cloudy day or when cloud, clouds are um, moving back and forth across the sun, it's constantly calculating the best uh, current voltage uh, ratio to give you the most uh, efficient type of uh, charge going on that. Here's a close-up on the screen on there. As you can see, um, we're pretty low on the voltage. Um, I had quite a, stuff, quite a bit of stuff on there and it's been cloudy all day long. Uh, not the best day to show you as far as the kind of power this thing can put out. But I'll show you a screen capture of uh, what it can do from a couple of days ago. These are our controllers that um, I have um, on the system, basically, they uh, monitor the temperatures in the greenhouse. They tell the uh, hydrotic, uh, hydroponic pumps when to turn on. And it also monitors the battery voltage. Um, the reason why I do that through this system is um, I have this uh, forklift uh, battery charger down here. And it's a 48-volt system. And uh, since I'm running computers in there, if there was uh, the batteries got too low and it needed to switch over, um, basically it kicks on that charger and I don't you know, have any interruptions of computers and I don't have to use any uh, UPS units. Now these charge controllers here, they can operate either 12 volt, 24 volt, or 48 volt. Um, I went with the 48 volt because uh, it's a lot more efficient and uh, it allows me to use all my arrays because the way this uh, charge controller works, if it's set up as 12 volts, its maximum uh, wattage 
is uh, 800 watts. If it's at 24 volts, the maximum wattage is 1600 watts. And if it's at 48 volts, the maximum this thing handles is 3200 watts. Um, I have 2800 watts worth of panels, so I got a little bit of leeway there. If for some reason it were to go over that, like I said, if I had like what's called cloud edge, it's like magnifying, intensifying the sun for momentarily uh, as the cloud passes over. It can't exceed that rating of 2800. So if it, if it uh, that my panels are at, if it got up to 3200, this charge controller will actually um, limit the charge, uh, limit the uh, current going through it, and limit it at 3200, and it won't damage the controller. This is one of the features that I really liked about this controller. Um, this right here is a, a the um, pure sine wave inverter. Um, since I'm running computers on my system, um, I need to have a pure sine wave inverter. Computers can't use a modified sine wave. Also, um, since the fact that I have it running into a, a, an electrical panel on there, um, electrical code has, uh, going back to one single ground, uh, it's a national electrical code. And in order to be able to run that into this isolated panel with that ground on there, the neutral is bound to the uh, ground. And uh, if you had a modified sine wave inverter, it'd blow out instantly. Um, so the uh, pure sine wave will allow the ground and the neutral to be bound together. Modified sine wave inverters are really good if you're going to be running uh, any kind of um, electrical loads that have motors on them. Um, Modif pure sine wave inverters work really good because basically uh, modified sine waves make the motor run slower, which runs hotter, and it shortens the life of the motor. So if you wanted to uh, run uh, motors you know, efficiently, you need to have a pure sine wave inverter. And I've got VAP coolers that run on that. Um, I've got a, a refrigerator freezer unit here that runs on it. And the only way you can run uh, computers electronics and like electronics like this too is it has to be uh, a pure sine wave inverter. Um, I temporarily had a modified sine wave inverter on there and that transformer right there was running uh, really hot and it was buzzing. It's nice and cool and quiet now with the pure sine wave inverter. Some of the loads that I have on it is the lighting in this room, uh, this refrigerator freezer unit, this hot water heater which is about 1400 watts, um, and this is my uh, battery bank. Uh, it's 12 uh, batteries, 12 volt batteries, hooked up in a 48 volt configuration. Uh, that would be four batteries hooked in series to create the 48 volts, and then I take the two banks and hook those in parallel, and then uh, that doubles my amp hours. I have about 1,380 amp hours total on this. Okay, here we are inside the office, and I'm showing you the um, uh, TriStar MPPT um, controller web configuration. This is uh, HTML output that allows you to read uh, uh, the uh, uh, live data on there. And as you can see right now, not a whole lot of power being produced on this cloudy day. Uh, battery voltage is at 47 volts. Uh, it's looking to get up to 57. May not be able to do that with all the load that I have on it. Uh, in this room here, I have three computers running continuously, laser printer that runs, I have an inkjet printer, uh, all the lighting, um, some resistive loads, um, and like I said, in the middle of the night, if the battery drops down too low, that uh, forklift uh, battery charger will kick on. Here's a screenshot from the other day. Uh, showing you um, what the system can do at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And it was kind of a little bit of an overcast that day, but not quite as bad as today. And you can see that it, on that day it had uh, um, well over 2,100 watts. And uh, the charging current was 49.5. So you, know, you can see that it really puts out. I'm expecting that in the summer, uh, the sun straight overhead, uh, I'm going to be able to produce... Um, close to that 60 amp charging, no problem. Uh, it's quite a bit of power. And here's uh, the historical data that you click on that link over here and you get this data um, log on there. And it basically shows you over um, about a span of 200 days you can put in 
this thing records shows your maximum minimum battery voltages uh, your rate um, voltages your amp hours for the day and you can see you know what kind of uh, power you're producing um, this is uh, the end of January it's the 25th today and uh, the days are getting longer so um, I'm actually watching the power increase uh, daily except of course on a really cloudy day like today um, power has gone up just a little bit there. I, I imagine um, a couple more hours um, it'll put out a little bit more power because I've got the panels tilted all the way down and even being cloudy it's not at a really good angle. So I'll probably hit about a thousand watts today which is not a whole lot but good enough to run everything today no problem. That concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments leave them and uh, try to get back to you and answer them. Thank you.